Now let's talk about a fine word that has baffled and infuriated us from time to time. A term that is perceived to be a religious order, but in reality is just an opinion and often a bizarre one at that. The word I'm talking about is fatwa. The latest one has come from Bangladesh, from a Bangladeshi cleric rather. The man on your screen, his name is Mufti Ahmedullah, a prominent Islamic cleric who appears on TV shows quite frequently and is quite internet savvy. He has more than 3 million followers on Facebook and YouTube, but don't go by his popularity because Mufti Ahmedullah may have issued the most unpopular fatwa ever. He wants Muslims to stop using a Facebook emoji, this one, the haha -ha emoji. Well, that's how one would react when they listen to the Mufti's explanation. In a short clip posted on Facebook, Ahmadullah said the emoji is often used to mock people, to ridicule them for their posts and pictures on social media, and hence, totally forbidden in Islam. Listen to this. Judy Roshigata Kore, Mojakore, Amra Erkom Kono react Kuretaki, Jashonga Kurchi, Jar Poste, Montobe, Hahari Dechi, just Anunder Juno, Mojakur Bajuno, Tinijotani, Moja Kurchenetake, Mojar Cholani, Chenta Hoshi to Binovisha, Kitu Taketa Chilo Korbajuno, Bidrupa to Babiti Kuritari, Haram, Shampuno Najai Zekti Kaj. Haha is Haram, he says. You think that fatwa is too much? Then wait till you hear about the response. The video we just showed you has received more than 90,000 likes and hearts, more than 3,000 comments, most of them positive, and more than half a million views. But the response on Twitter is completely different. Hundreds of users are in splits. They're pointing out how ridiculous this fatwa is and mocking the logic behind it with the very same emoji. Now, both sides are entitled to their opinions, and while we are debating a fatwa, we may as well ask this. Are fatwas even relevant in today's world? Are Muslims bound to follow them? They pop up in, in the news every now and then, and most of us mistake it for a decree, a religious order akin to a court ruling. Well, the fact is, a fatwa is just an opinion, a piece of advice on matters per pertaining to Islamic laws, practice and convention. So any Muslim can ask for a fatwa, any Islamic scholar can issue a fatwa, but it's not a legal or moral obligation. It doesn't have to be obeyed. That said, how did fatwas get such a bad name? Well, it helps to look at history to understand. The word fatwa became controversial after 1989. That's when Iran's supreme, supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, issued a fatwa to kill novelist Salman Rushdie for his satanic verses. The Supreme Leader claimed that Rushdie's novel insulted the Prophet and that he deserved to die. And since then, fatwa became thought of as a synonym for a death warrant, a symbol of a dark and regressive stereotype of the Islamic world. And much credit for the stereotype goes to Islamic clerics themselves. Over the years, we've seen some astonishing fatwas for some of the most illogical reasons. Well, here are the weirdest of the lot. In 2005, a fatwa was issued against tennis star Sania Mirza, warning her to wear proper clothes or she'd be stopped from playing the game. The Islamic body behind this fatwa said the player was corrupting the minds of youngsters and that her clothes left very little for imagination. Whose imagination, you would ask? Perhaps their own. Then in 2008, Malaysia's top Islamic council issued a fatwa against tomboys. The body said that teenage girls who dress like men should be punished, calling their lifestyle against the order of nature. Would you believe that there's a fatwa against Mickey Mouse too? In 2018, a Saudi cleric called the Disney icon a soldier of Satan, a repulsive, corrupting creature that deserved to die. Too bad the cleric forgot the laws of nature do not apply to cartoons, not yet at least. And in 2014, a religious watchdog in the UAE issued a fatwa against living on Mars, the planet. The body warned Muslims against opting for any future Mars mission, saying that Islam does not permit traveling to the red planet. A look at the irony. Today, the UAE has become the first Arab country to send a rover to Mars, the Hope Orbiter, that's what they call it. It is searching for signs of life. What does all of this tell you? That fatwas can be as irrelevant today as those issuing them. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.